Hi everybody, how you doing? Uh, happy Monday. Um, we forgot to charge Drew's toy thing, so Alex is having to hold the phone today. <laughs> so it might be slightly slightly more shaky than it is normally. <laughs> um, but he's pretty good, Alex. He's braced well, so we'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Um, how are you all? Hope you had a lovely, lovely weekend. Um, we're going to do some, have a little look at Trapunto today. Um, and then before we do that, I've got a few bits to show you that have come into the shop. So we've been out of stock of these for a little while, but I managed to get more of them in. It's the little, um, have you drew, um, drew, sorry, Alex, got Alex all week this week because Drew's in North Wales on holiday. Um, got the little prim birds, which is, a, it's a needle threader and it's easy needle threader. So you've got like the, the beak is actually like a, you know, um, what you insert that into the needle of the eye, drop your thread over it and pull it back through. These have been really popular in the past. I've managed to get some more of those in. So they'll be going on the website. Um, I've also had these in as well, which are just really, really pretty. If you haven't got a, a turner or a creaser for getting your points it right the way in, these have come in as well. These are all part of the Prim Love range. Again, these will be going on the website this afternoon. Um, what else have I got to show you? So these are new in as well. So these are water soluble marking pencils. I don't know if you can see. You've got six different colours in there. Oh, I don't know if uh, Al can get it. Yeah, <laughs> you've got six different colours in there. So it use, works like those, um, you know, those old fashioned pens you used to have. We used to be able to click them down the different colours. But it means that if you're, they're a very fine point. So if you're doing um, things like the sashiko templates, you can go through those nice and easily because you've got a nice fine point. But because you've got white as well as colours in there, white and yellow for your dark colours, and then there's other colours then if you're using light ones, um, you've got everything in one pencil. Um, they are water soluble as well, so you can mark up a quilt and then um, with these or you know your piece in or whatever, and then you can just use you know um, you can just wash them out. So you know kitchen roll or a bit of cotton wool, damp and sponge it off, and it'll stay put. So we've got those ones, and then I've got just a couple of these. So you might have seen these all over Facebook and all at the moment called hot hemmers. So they're designed so that you can actually iron, they're like a ruler that you can iron over. So if you want to press a certain size hem, you can, they're particularly good if you're dressmaking or bag making more than quilting, but we have had a few people um, request them. And there's two different sizes. You've got like a long thin one, which um, is really good for like curves and stuff because you've got a curved edge on it. Um, and you can see here, I don't know if you can see on the picture, you can actually fold the fabric over. So if you need a, a hem of three eighths of an inch, you can fold it over and actually iron it directly on this, which gives you a really nice crisp edge and an exact like hem in. Um, and then this one, uh, I think is actually more useful for bag making and quilting because you've got, um, it's more square. So again, if you needed to turn an edge, if you're doing like mitres or something like that, you could actually turn the edge and you can hire, you know, measure it out, the, the overlap, and iron it directly on. I've only got one of the long ones and I've got two of these ones, okay? Um, we just got a couple in because people have been asking them for us. So yeah, it says fold, measure, press hems and more in one step. So it's heat resistant and allows the steam of the iron to pass through it. It's also non-slip so fabric won't move. Um, I know people have been asking about them so I thought I'd show you those few bits before we get started. Um, again, we will all be going on the website this afternoon. Uh, so who's there? Who's come to play today? Who's saying hello? Uh, Sean, Catherine, Kate, Grace, Linda, Oh, lots Sheena, and lots Wendy. of you. Lots of people are in today. Fab. Lovely, lovely. Fabulous. So, um, I've had a little play with Chipunta. Now, this is something I did, oh, it's like a little test piece, probably about 14, 15 years ago. Um, it's a long time ago and I haven't really done any since so I've had to re-familiarise myself with the, the technique this weekend for you guys but a lot of you had asked about it so um, so this is my little sample piece hopefully I'll we'll be able to get, get this um, and the trapunto, trapunto basically is stuffed quilting okay so this piece is trapuntoed and I'm going to show you that and then the, the rib bits we actually we're going to use wool in there and that's actually called Italian quilting um, and it's when you get this lovely sort of ribbed look to it. Now, this pattern was by a lady called Sylvia Critcher. Okay, she's like the expert on Trapunto in the country. Okay, she has got a website. If you want to have a go at this, 
I would suggest I think I paid like four or five quid for this little kit like I said it was quite a few years ago but she she's still going and the website I, I did check it out um, I would absolutely go onto her website and buy one of her little what they call taster kits okay she's got lots and lots of little taster kits on there that are sort of between five and ten quid and everything comes in it including the pattern and how to do it and whatever because she's just so brilliant at it she's so so brilliant at it and it's really they're really easy to follow the patterns okay i'm going to take you through some of it today but um i would absolutely it, this is her pattern that i'm using it was a kit that i bought from her like i said ages ago that i made one and i'd never made the second one so that's what i'm going to do with you today okay um but absolutely check out her website her website is where's it gone is it gone Hang on, it's on in somewhere. Her website is uh, www.sylviacritcher.co.uk, but I'll put a link on our, our afterwards uh, in the comments to this, okay? But yeah, have a, have a little look at her stuff. It's um, She really knows what she's talking about a lot more than I do, <laughs> okay? So I've already partially stitched some of this, okay? Because obviously, you know, time restraints and everything, you don't want to see me, you don't need to see me stitch it all out. You can use whatever th cotton you like. Now, I quite like um, variegated cottons for this idea, and I quite like variegated cottons for hand quilting. There are more on the website, actually, of the, the sulk is. I put a load on at the weekend, lots of different colours. Um, and it gives that sort of gentle outline of your stitching before we stuff it, okay? So, like I said, I've had to partially do this, but I'm going to take you through the steps. In, in the kits, you need... So you need a top fabric, okay? So this is just a you know a normal cream co coloured cotton. You could use calico, you could use any solid at all. It doesn't have to be in cream, it could be whatever. And you need a piece of gauze or muslin, okay, um, behind it. You could use a second piece of fabric, a very lightweight cotton behind it, you know, a piece of old sheeting or something like that. It doesn't have to be gauze, okay? Um, I, again, did a little bit of research and it could absolutely be be just another piece of fabric. Sylvia chooses to use uh, choose a gauze behind it. Um, actually, you know, because um, we, we do it quite a lot, we open up, we buy the cheapy pillows from Ikea, like the £1.50 ones, or a duvet cover, uh, and we open them up to use the toy stuff in. Um, but that the, the bag that they come in, that very thin sort of netty, gauzy stuff, or a duvet, you know, the really cheapy, cheapy duvets, that's perfect for the back of this because it's really really lightweight and um, it doesn't affect this but it's enough to hold hold the stuffing in okay so any questions so far or are we okay because I feel like I've just gone blah, 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 at you <laughs> um, anything no there no questions just lots of people saying hello uh, Jean said well done for the great demo on Sunday oh thank you oh yeah I forgot to say about that thank you for those who watched um, I have put the video of, of our, my bit um, onto YouTube now if anybody didn't get a chance to watch it. But yeah, thank you. Yeah, I did, um, did go on and see lots of your names on there, actually, which was really nice to know that you were supporting us. That was lush. Um, yeah, it went really well, didn't it? It was good. It was good. So uh, it's a nice day. Um, what else? What else was I going to say? Oh, sorry for the drunken live the other day, Saturday night. <laughs> We'd had maybe one or two gin and tonics and suddenly remembered that we hadn't done the little reminder. We were supposed to do it when I got there, not not at like 11 o'clock at night. And we'd, we'd had a couple of gins by then. <laughs> so I do apologise for uh, for the drunkenness. <laughs> well, actually, I was quite bad by the time I got home. I haven't been that bad for ages. <laughs> it was my birthday, though, so, you know, I'm allowed. <laughs> so anyway, back to the trapunto. Um, you can... <coughs> Excuse me. You can do this in in two ways, okay? You can either back stitch or run in stitch. Now, I quite like if I'm going to fully stuff it, stuff a uh, stuffer area to do back stitch. I think it just holds the stuff in in a little bit more. And if I'm going to do the corded quilting, the corded trapunto, which is the Italian quilting, um, I've used a run in stitch on that one, okay? So, I'm using a variegated cotton. I've already done a little bit of this. So just while I'm threading my needle, any comments there? Al, anybody having a chat? What are uh, we doing? 
Caroline said one or two year, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was home pause. So, um, so yeah, I think it was about four home pause. So that's probably about four triples. <laughs> oh, it was a really nice night though. We had Chinese, we played board game, silly board game, drank far too much gin, caught up and, uh, and then, um, yeah, and then went in the hot tub. And then I was a little bit poorly when I got home. Oops. <laughs> Uh, Linda said, would a light interfacing work? Um, yes, as long as it wasn't an iron-on interfacing. You don't want an iron-on iron one because um, you need to be, we need to be able to get in there. So you wouldn't want it, um, you wouldn't want it to be stuck to the outside fabric. If you've got a stitch or, stitch in interfacing, yes, it would. Yeah, absolutely. So, right, Al, you're going to have to come forward a bit because I can't stretch that much so I've already backstitched so all I did was on the pattern piece okay before I put the the gauze on I've put this over my pattern and just traced out if you could use a light, light box if you wanted to that's absolutely fine once I traced out the pattern I've just sandwiched it up with the piece of gauze and just lightly tacked it together really quickly all that tacking is going to come out and then you just get to sit and stitch Okay, and we're just going to stitch out the design. So I've already, I've done just back stitch round there and we're just going to back stitch this final petal. Okay, so I'm going to just bring my thread up here like that oh, without it knotting, which it just did. That's because I've got way too long a thread. That was definitely a, let me get rid of some of that thread because that's way, way too long. So any other comments there, love, while I just poodle with this? Um, there we go, that's better. No one else having a chat? There's a belated happy birthday from Heather. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I had a lush day on Friday actually. Um, that's spoiled rotten, which was lovely. Went for uh, lunch in town with my husband, and then we did a bit of shopping, and then we went for a massage. So it was really nice. So just going to do a back stitch okay I'm sure most of you know back stitch but I'm just going to go back in where I came out there and come slightly further across okay like that and then back in where I came out like that and then for and I'm literally following the line so it's like when you do red work so if any of you've done red work this is exactly the same we're just doing it with a normal sewing thread so it's kind of a it's kind of whole cloth quilting but with a slight difference really I suppose it's the same as same as your whole cloth quilting so I'm just going to you would literally just follow the lines around doing a back stitch okay and you would follow any shapes that um, you want to stuff okay so I'm just gonna let me see I'm just going down like that coming up a little bit further along on the line Hopefully Al can get that and then pull it through. Okay, so I would, I'm not going to do the whole thing. Again, you don't need to see me do that because I can show you on one of these. But we would, you would just stitch all the way around that one, any any bits of the design that you want to. And you could turn any design into, into a whole cloth quilt. You know, have a little look through colouring books and stuff like that, you know, or um, you can get free printables online and stuff. Anything can, the thing with your printers, you want something that um, has got a large-ish area it will actually stuff and so you can make it stand out okay so I would go all the way around that one just like I've done the petals just in a back stitch all the other areas I've just done as a running stitch okay so I would with this leaf here so if I just chop that off a second I'm gonna finish this later okay I would just do a running stitch around these little um, le <coughs> leathers they're not leathers the leaves these little leaves like that and round those sort of external petals too and again with that it's it's more about consist don't worry about having to get them too small or anything like that it's more about consistency of stitch length okay so you can just do a little rocking running stitch like that along the lines and pull through okay so nice nice simple stitching Okay, so we're going to pretend that this one is fully stitched. All right, so these ones here, I would, um, in fact, actually, I'm just going to finish this one so I can show you how to put the lines in, actually. Sorry, let's just go down this one. Any other comments there? 
Oh, just want to finish this little bit. A lot of, not that have come in. No, so we're not seeing anything. Nobody saying hello. Nobody been no. up to anything this weekend. Um, no. What are you scrolling through? What are people saying? Was that just all the hellos? Just and lots of hellos. Yeah. Saying how funny the Saturday. Night <laughs> I do apologise for swearing as well. Right at the very end, I couldn't work out how to stop it. And he did, I did swear on camera. I, did, I didn't pay attention to Davina. Always used to make me laugh with Davina McCall with Big Brother. You are live on Channel 4. Please do not swear. I proper swore, didn't I? Oops. So. <laughs> yeah, so you would, um, you would just stitch around those, okay? Backstitch anything you want to stuff. And then any other pieces, you would just do a running stitch. So you, hopefully you can see on this one. You can see, so with the variegated thread, I've just done a running stitch. I've also done some hand quilting on that one too. Um, give me two seconds. I've just realised I didn't pick up my pen. Let me grab a pen. There it is. Okay. So if you want to get this lovely ribbed effect here, okay, so like this in, in the petals, you could absolutely just stuff these petals just like the center ones if you wanted to but if you want to get this nice sort of ribbed effect which is the italian quilting thing this is how you do it so you she's with the patterns <coughs> you can see on this one here she had she can just do it like that and you can stuff these or she's giving you the option to to add your um your lines in easiest way to do that is a little fricks on pen and your ruler you're going to go straight down the center first like that center of the petal and then you're going to measure it out across rather quarter of an inch like that and just mark them up okay and then turn around and do it the other way so I'm just using my quarter of an inch like that like that and then I would use those lines just like I've done here okay just to run and stitch down it's incredibly simple sewing okay there's nothing complicated here at all it's all really really nice and nice and easy okay you would then once you've stitched the whole thing out okay you would then take off your your lines now I know I've just got rid of my lines but I want to show you guys okay so I would take off my lines and you would get rid of the tack in that's in the center okay leave it tacked on the outside but just get rid of your tack in in the center Okay, let's get rid of that. There we go, come on. Okay, anybody else having a chat today? What were you up to all this weekend? Anything exciting? Anybody do anything nice? Nothing else has come through. No. There we go. Okay, so pretend it's all stitched. All right, so once I've stitched it all out, you would then decide which bits that you want to stuff. Okay. And this, so we're going to turn it over now. So I'm going to stuff just one of these just to show you, okay? I'm going to stuff this one here. So we're going to turn it over. And you can see that this gauze is nice and lightweight, okay? I'm just going to get a little pair of scissors in there like that and lift it up so that I'm just going to snip through a little tiny hole in the gauze, okay? Just a tiny, tiny little hole like that, all right? And I haven't cut the outside fabric I've just lifted up and cut that gauze you're then going to stuff it okay so you want to use little pieces of toy stuffing no <laughs> trying to do this to camera is not easy because you almost need okay so I'm going to lift up the gauze and you're going to stuff it now you don't want to cut that gauze too big and it does it is a bit tricky to get it going to start with you've got to kind of be a bit patient and gradually ease that stuffing in and stuff that little area that you want to be sort of raised okay so let me see if I can keep my hands out of the way and try and do it for you it's not the easiest thing to do to camera okay and then lift the gauze that side I'm just getting my fingers in there and shove it come on it's much easier when it's facing you trying to do this <laughs> away from myself. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. So you would stuff, there we go, that's not too bad. Stuff in like that, okay? And what that does is raises that one out, puffs that out, okay? Don't worry about 
sew in this up or anything because we're going to put a piece of wadding over the top anyway so you don't need to okay so um you've made a little tiny hole there the you don't want to make too big a hole because it's not going to hold the stuff stuffing in place while you're hand quilting but you can don't worry about closing that up you can just leave it like that okay and you would go around and you would stuff each petal so i would then open up this one here add a little bit of stuff in open up this one here add some stuff in okay for the ribbed effect okay which again is a form of trapunto you want to get yourself some really really chunky wool okay now if i was doing this all in black i could use a black or a navy wool but obviously it would show through the fabric so i would stick with a with a paler one okay thread it up into a nice lot onto a nice large needle nice bodkin or something and <coughs> again you're going to turn it over and you want to use the edge of the bodkin to lift just the gauze and go down each of those ribs so can you sit so if i just flip this over you can hopefully you'll be able to see so where i've done that little bit of stitching just to hold it all together i've got like a little channel in between then so i'm just going to go down like that and i'm going to pull pull the wool through like that don't pull it all the way through and then just trim off that excessy bit like that okay and then i would go into my next sort of like little channel insert the bodkin in and come out at the top like that and pull through like that and again just chop off the excess just careful not to chop any stitching or anything and you would just work your way down the petal like that okay as you can see this is incredibly simple to do it really does all come from the initial design i think with this because actually the stitching is nice and nice and easy to do and the the stuffing bit is nice and easy to do i think it all comes from the beauty of the trapento comes from the initial design um, and like i said if you google or pinterest there are lots and lots or go onto sylvia's website there are lots and lots of designs out there and this is only like one tiny little piece you know, you can do full cushion covers or full quilts with it okay and can you see now hopefully that wool is just filled up those channels can you see and you get that lovely ribbed effect hopefully Al's getting that get that lovely ribbed effect on that okay so you would stuff or use wool in any any bits that you want you would completely fill it up okay so i would do all of my petals i would probably do some wool around that center ring there okay um in her original pattern she said to leave these um leaves flat i put some extra hand quilting in mine just to give them a little bit more decoration okay so just move that that's stuffing was very close to the hot iron then <laughs> okay so you would fill it all up hopefully that's all making sense so far are there any questions or comments there anybody Anybody got any questions about it? Um, no? No questions about the trapento so far. Anything else? Any other questions or comments there? Um, Just lots of laughing at me and Sarah for being drunk, is it? Swapping <laughs> the camera by accident. Oh. Um, <laughs> Did they get a, get a full picture of your mush then? Yep. <laughs> uh, Anne was on a two-day cake-making course, making oh, a hedgehog. Nice. Lash, let's have some pictures, please. Oh, nice. Oh, I need some cake. Do you know what? I didn't get birthday cake. I had a birthday donut from Linda. I didn't get birthday cake. Nobody... Phil didn't get you a cake. Phil didn't get me a cake, Al. Harsh, isn't he? Harsh. I can't believe I didn't have cake. <laughs> anyway, once you've done all your stitching, once you've done your stitching, once you've filled everything up that you want to fill up, okay, you would then just pop a piece of wadding on the back okay you could if like this was going to be a little a pin cushion so i didn't need a backing fabric but if you were making like some little um if you're making a quilt or if you were making um a cushion cover or something i would probably put a piece of fabric on the back and then all i did was just do some hand quilting just some you know really simple and i picked the same color fabric if same color thread so it didn't detract from the the variegated and i just outlined the whole thing with some hand quilting and then went just into those little leaves as well. Okay, on this one. Okay, I could then, if I wanted to, carry on quilting and quilt the whole of this to keep it down nice and flat. But that's basically it. It's a really, really simple little technique. 
um, I would highly, highly recommend Sylvia's uh, website. She's got lots and lots. Like I said, this this kit was like a fiver and it had enough to, for me to make two and all the wool and everything in it as well and my wadding. I've got a little piece of wadding over there somewhere. I made this one ages ago and it was still shoved in with the rest of it. I've never done anything with it. So it's made me get it back out and have a play, which is nice. Um, but she's got lots and lots of different kits or have a go at it, something yourself. You know, there is nothing stopping you. Um, if you look at like um, sort of traditional applique designs, um, you know, maybe like all the like the tulips that we did, you know, the tulips we did in the isolation block, that would work. Um, you could, you know, if you drew that out and quilted into it, then you could stuff like the tulip head and the leaves and, the, and maybe do some of the rib work on the stem and then hand quilt it or something like that. You know, there's lots and lots of designs out there that you can absolutely have a play with um, and, uh, and adapt for this method. Um, if you have a little look at um, any sort of um, like the Welsh whole cloth quilting, if you look at those, a lot of that could be adapted, you know, their initial design that could then be stuffed and all because it's just a quilted piece that you're stuffing. OK, it's, you're just emphasising those little pieces. So um, so that's it. Any questions or comments there about that? Anybody asking yeah, anything? Quite a few. Like, that's lovely. It's nice. Cool. Pretty easier than I thought. Really, really nice and easy. Really nice and easy. And like um, the wool, you, I mean, they traditionally use like a lamb's wool, but you could use, um, we do like a special chunky in the shop, special chunky wool, which is the same size as this. Absolutely works just as well. You know, you don't have to have a special wool or anything. You could use this and it's no, no problem at all. Okay, just just a nice big thick chunky wool will get this. If you wanted a finer rib, you could use you could do smaller lines, you know, on here. So maybe do like an eighth of an inch in between and use just like a double knit or something in it, and you'd get a much finer rib. Um, so it's something you can have a little play with, and really really nice and easy. It really is just cut a hole, put some stuff in it, really, because <laughs> all that gets held in by the wadding. Anything else there? Um. Not much else. No, okie doke. Um, right, well, I'm, I'll be back tomorrow with... I'm going to show you how to create t-shirt yarn. We're going to cut up... Alex donated some t-shirts for me yesterday. We're going to cut up some t-shirts and make t-shirt yarn and then show you how you can crochet it, okay? It's really fun, really good for um, upcycling stuff as well. So, you know, if you... Um, you don't actually have to... We, you can actually do it with fabric as well with cotton fabric too which i'm going to show you but the t-shirt one is really super super easy and super super quick to do because um it kind of doesn't fray or anything because of the type of fabric it is but we're going to do that tomorrow at one and then we've got block of the week on wednesday and <coughs> what's that oh sarah's going to show you how to make some zero waste disposable sponges it's like scrubby things on Thursday which is really nice so we've got a bit of a almost a bit of an upcycling week this week lots of things to reuse with other things so that's the week ahead there are about five or six left on the raffle um if anybody hasn't had a go yet and would like to there's a few left on the raffle um I think that's it though um I'll get all those bits that I showed you earlier on onto the website so if anybody wants those give me a shout Oh, I know we've had all the blue kits as well as the pink kits in now. So I think Sarah's going to be, she might already be doing it, um, doing a ring round for anybody who reserved a kit. So we'll be cutting those and getting those out this week as well. Okay, so, um, so yeah, that's it. I will see you guys tomorrow at one o'clock. Take care. Bye.